All right. So welcome, everyone, to V Speaks. Um, this is a special episode with Patrick Davis, who's the founder of um, SIP, which is Songwriters in Paradise. And I'm filling in for Lisa Burwell today. I'm Jordan Staggs, the editor of B. And we're just uh, so excited to have you here today, Patrick. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Nice to see you, Jordan. Uh, we've <laughs> talked on the phone, so now I get to see you. So this is great. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's been a little while since we've talked. Um, I think you've had a couple of events since then. Yeah. So tell us about uh, how the last one went. Uh, the last one was in um, Sonoma. We do it in Hillsburg. So, uh, that's, um, you know, Sonoma wine country, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that was in July. And it was pretty, uh, it was pretty incredible. It was it was a. Uh, it was perfect. I, I don't know how else to say it. It was just the the events can. Um, they usually are pretty awesome, but this was. Uh, this was definitely one of the better better ones. Um, it was the second year we've ever done Songwriters in Paradise in Hillsburg, and uh, you know, as anything, um, you hope it just gets better and better each year. And the second year was uh, was a lot of fun. It was a lot of wine, a lot of music. <laughs> A lot of uh, camaraderie and friendship and stuff like that. So, uh, as as in terms of events, I, I I am already looking forward to next year. Like I think uh, it, it feels like it was like last week, and also it feels like it was like you know a year ago. Like it's, which means it was a good thing. I think. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, as an event planner, perfect is always what you want to hear. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah. that's great. Um, take yeah. us back a little bit and tell us about how you started Songwriters in Paradise and sort of what it is. Uh, yeah, SIP was, um, I've written songs and performed in Nashville and all over the world for the past 20 years or so. And I, you know, in Nashville, we do, uh, what they call writer's rounds. We do them all the time. That's, uh, the Bluebird Cafe is probably the most famous of those. And we sit in a a circle usually or in a row and there'll be three or four of us singing and performing and, and also telling stories. And usually for a very small crowd, you know, the Bluebird would be the most famous of those spots and the bluebird is only about 80 or 90 people can uh, are allowed in the bluebird and so it creates this ex- very exclusive kind of intimate experience that you don't really get usually outside of nashville uh but what i recognized was that if you took it outside of nashville people really really gravitated towards it and i besides writing songs and performing i love to travel I love to experience new places. I love to experience food and, you know, beverage and stuff, that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I um, kind of was like, wow, well, it would be a lot of fun to kind of put these together and do these things that we do in Nashville, this this music part, and then also take it to these extra- extraordinary places that I get to visit when I travel and when I get to play shows. And, um, and that's how SIP happened. And the first one started in the Bahamas uh, a little over a decade ago. And um, then we moved to uh, Cabo, which uh, Cabo comes up in December. I believe mm-hmm. some of you guys might be coming to that. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's um, that'll be the seventh annual SIP Cabo. And then uh, I started in Napa in 2018. And now we also have Hillsburg as well. So we have two that are wine centric, uh, one that's in Mexico and one that's in the Bahamas. So it's a it's a. Uh, yeah, it's it's not a bad gig. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a great variety of places for people that want something different when they're traveling to it as well. Yeah, so. yeah, and I think each person, um, we have a lot of uh, repeat offenders. You know, they come to <laughs> a lot of the events. So, and that's I think that um, says a lot about the events is that it's not the same thing every year at any of the at any of the locations, any of the destinations. We um we have folks that have been to every single year that we've done Cabo, every single year that we've done Napa. But they also will go, you know, maybe they'll change and they'll go to Hillsburg one year and then they'll come to Napa the next year. And then so and that's a really great um the variety is a key uh, you know to spice of life. So there you go. Yeah. That's very cool. Um so what can someone expect when they come say to the Cabo event in December? Uh, well, perfect weather is usually what we, uh, the biggest selling point for uh, Cabo and these, you know, we do it the, uh, the week after Thanksgiving every year. And it really is, um, an extraordinary, um, time in Cabo. It's, there's no humidity. It's, it's like 75, 80 degrees every day, 65, 70 every night. So that really bodes well for having shows on the beach and these experiences that we're trying to, uh, you know, to give to our attendees. Um, and then you have, I bring 12, uh, 10 or 12 of my songwriting friends and performers down and, and we play on the beach. Uh, you know, that's you, you play on the beach during the day and then we play on the beach during the night, you know, so <laughs> it's, that's kind of the idea. Um, and, and once again, it's that, it's that exclusive thing that I think folks 
really enjoy is they we're so busy. The world is such a busy place, uh, you know, whether it be traffic or work or, you know, just our day to day existence is so is so extremely busy um, with SIP. We try to slow everything down and we try to make it to where you get to experience things um, at, at just a, a slower clip. And 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 you really get to take it all in. You get to drink it all, drink all the alcohol if you want, it, <laughs> eat all the food and take it all the music. And it, it just build something that is going to last and a memory that's going to be there for a long time. Um, and not something that's the normal, you know, not, not mm-hmm. what you expect from this world that we, uh, that we live in now. Oh yeah. Well, we love that and we all need that for sure. Yes. <laughs> I think, um, a lot of the people who have performed at your SIP events have been here for the 30A songwriters festival. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which they do sure. every, uh, January or February and, you know, we've seen David Ryan Harris and yep. some of your other friends. So yeah, I think I think Broussard, just, I think uh, Mark yeah. Broussard and uh, and Paul McDonald. I think actually, I think I got a drunken uh, FaceTime from uh, <laughs> Paul McDonald, oh, no. <laughs> David Ryan, Chris, and somebody else last year at 30A. Um, you know, 30A uh-huh. is 30A is a good um example good of time. kind of yeah, it's it's one of those 30A is a good example of um of how the music, you know, taking the music out of the normal music places really does work very well. 30A, which is legendary. Um, it's a little larger than what I try to do with SIP. Um, with SIP, I really want it to be, you know, only 150, 200 people a night. That's the max. Um, and that's that to me, that's like a sweet spot. Um, nothing wrong with having thousands and thousands of people. We love playing for huge crowds, but for this particular event, because it is a three or four day festival um but it's a super boutique festival it's mm-hmm. it it gives you the opportunity as an attendee to uh dive into something much deeper than you would in most experiences that you have with music and um and and travel and so that's that's kind of um what 30a and those things are amazing but yeah. sip i want it to be a little smaller so and i love 30a so don't give i'm not talking about oh 30A. no no, no i just say i just say i think that that's um that that is a great indication of what um a representation of how uh, taking music out of the places you expect to see it can really mm-hmm. uh, elevate the experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one of our favorite things about that festival too, is that all the different venues, some of them are a lot smaller, a lot more intimate. So it's a lot more like what you're doing. Um, who is on your lineup for Cabo this year? Uh, we have um, a, a really incredible uh, lineup um, for uh, one of my favorites. It's uh, we have Gabe Dixon. Gabe- is uh, an extraordinary piano player uh, and singer songwriter who he plays in the Tedeschi Trucks band, which is one of the greatest touring outfits in the world right now. Um, he's uh, he's not just a extraordinary piano player, but just if it was 1970, I always say if it was 1972, uh, Gabe Dixon would be selling out arenas, you know, around the world. He'd be like uh, Billy Joel. He's that type, but it's okay. just a different, you know, music's a little different now. Um, but Gabe is just incredible and. Um, Gabe is going to be there. Uh, Mark Broussard, who is a, just an extraordinary singer songwriter from Louisiana, who is uh, is currently on tour in Europe. He's, he he headlines all over the states as well, but I think he's doing fifteen thousand people a night over there at some shows. I mean, he's an, he's it he just blows your mind how how talented he is. Um, Chris Stills, uh, I mentioned him a second ago. Chris is um, he's just released a new album, and his his dad is Stephen Stills, who. You know, everybody knows yeah. Stephen Stills and uh, his mom is actually a, an extraordinary artist from over in uh, Europe as well. So um, my wife, uh, Lauren Jenkins, who was a pretty, a pretty, pretty special singer songwriter. Yeah. Um, Paul McDonald. Um, let's see. Uh, Paul is a American, uh, American Idol alum, but I but he's a lot more than that. But he's that's where I think a lot of people might know him from uh, his wife, Leah Blevins, uh, Blevins who is uh, kind of an Americana songbird i guess um and and a few other folks we've got i think we have about 10 or 11 uh performers this mm-hmm. year um and and we keep that crowd that, that that crew pretty tight um pretty small but they're all my friends you know it's people that i vouch for personally so they the the idea with sip is you're not just going to see us perform you're going to you're going to be able to hang out with us you're going to be able to if you're at the you know we stay at the bahia hotel in cabo um we, our the shows are only like a block away like it's so, so close. Everything's within this really small little area. And so because of that, the attendees and the performers are kind of together the entire 
you know, four or five days and nights. So the idea is I want performers who are going to blow your mind on the stage, but they're also going to be wonderful to sit around the bar and talk to because you're going to hang out with us. And, um, and that's one, once again, one of the things that makes SIP different than, you know, 99% of the other events you, uh, you, you know, you may spend your money on. Yeah. And so are you going to be up there on stage too? Oh yeah. 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 I I have to, yeah, I'll be there as well. I, um, you know, I, I, there's four shows for SIP Cabo. There's four uh, performances. And, um, and so we usually, we say everyone's going to play at least two of those shows or two of the nights, but inevitably someone drinks too much tequila one night. And so they have to change nights with somebody else or, <laughs> or we, we decide we were having tequila while we're at the show and we're not playing, but we're going to go play on stage. So it's a, it's, Just it's very, it's, it's very loose. It can, it can be a lot of things can happen. So that's yeah. nice. No, it sounds like a lot of fun. And like you said, that keeps it, keeps it different, keeps everyone on their toes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. It's, it, it makes it, um, we don't want it to be too structured to where, um, we want to folks to, we want the attendees and the performers and songwriters. We all want to feel like it's something that could spontaneously, um, you know, anything, anything's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, um, about just yourself and your songwriting. Um, how'd you get into music? Uh, I have lived in Nashville for, I moved here in 2002, in uh, January of 2002. So I've been here for about 21 or 22 years now. Um, I graduated from the University of South Carolina. I'm a Gamecock. And um, I uh, I moved here right after I graduated. And uh, my father is a musician. So I was always around music, but I didn't really start performing till I was, or really playing until I was about 16 or 17. And I fell in love with songwriting. I just, I just really... I would look at, you know, at albums and, and this is actually before the internet. So you'd have to look at liner notes and I'd be like, well, who wrote this song? And you, yeah. you know, you find out information on the folks who were uh, kind of behind the scenes. And I realized that Nashville, Tennessee was where a lot of those um, songwriters and not just country songwriters, because I didn't really grow up on country music. I grew up on the Beatles and Rolling Stones and Jim right. Croce and Same. James Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, it was more about um, kind of finding out, uh, where you could do uh, music for a living, but it didn't necessarily have to be country. And I realized that in Nashville, while you get the idea that Nashville is 100% all, always country music, it's actually not. There's so much more that happens uh, up here. So I moved up here and started writing songs. And, and uh, you know, as the, uh, I guess as luck would have it, I started writing songs that country artists started recording. <laughs> so it was, um, it but which was, fi- which was fine. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and I do like the songwriting aspect. And there's a few changes I could make. Um, to, to make that work. Um, and I did that for about 10 or 12 years, um, pretty much exclusively. And, um, it's a great gig if you can get it. And it's, um, it's, there's, there's some, you know, money to be made and friends to be had, all that, all that good stuff. But I ended up, uh, about 10 years ago, I decided that when I recognized that the industry was kind of changing, as, as all of you folks who are watching this know, you now get your music on Spotify and Apple and YouTube. And those aren't the, those aren't the revenues or the those aren't the ways that we used to get our music. You know, we used to have to buy the music. It was it was much different. And when I recognized that those revenue streams were drying up, uh, the classic streams, is when I kind of decided I wanted to start playing more. And that's when SIP uh, started as well. I said, I, I need I got to be a little smarter about how I um, how I do this. You know, when I need to figure out if there's other ways to make money besides just writing the songs, because that I saw that money was drying up. And right. and so that's when I started performing. And um, I, I can't. Uh, say anything bad about writing songs i've written songs for folks you know from from jimmy buffett to darius rucker to lady a to to, to jewel to, to darius rucker to uh morgan wallen for god's mm-hmm. sake you know it's, it's been kind of all over the board yeah. um but uh but for me personally i realized that what it really made me the happiest um was writing but all was not just writing but was performing and so i started playing a lot and um putting out my own music and then also sip and and I still do write from time to time for folks. If I get a phone call from somebody, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say no. You know. Yeah. So. Well, so I'm super interested in that process and how it works. Like when you have lyrics or a melody, like how do you start, and then how does it end up getting to that person that's that's ultimately well, recording it? Yeah. Um. It can kind of happen anyway. You know, it's probably like if you're writing an article or something. You know, you mm-hmm. you know it. You can you get an idea and you go, oh, I should write about this or write, you know, I, or you have a, have a line that kind of steers you in a certain uh, direction. That's, that's essentially what happens when it comes to so- writing songs. Um, 
you can uh, in our phones, you know, everybody has their phone now and you and you used to be notebooks, but now it's more about your notes in your phone. Yeah. And and I would I'll write down ideas or titles or I may hear mm-hmm. someone say something at a restaurant or a bar and I go, "Oh, that was a good, you know. We are our, our our ears are kind of always open to like uh, we're always listening like is yeah. that what did you say? Um and so that's usually a good starting point. And then when it comes to the guitar or the piano, whatever you're writing on, um, you can sometimes have a melody on that. But for me personally, it's usually the lyric that starts it off. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea has to kind of spark it. And um, I don't know. It's uh, when it comes to getting it to someone who actually will record it. There was a time that it used to be a lot easier because uh, uh I don't know. It goes back such a bigger conversation. It just there, there used to be um, there used to be uh, it used to be a lot easier just to kind of get your songs out there to folks. Well, now the camps are a lot tighter together. Um, people have a stranglehold on their their people. And so you really have to most of the songs that you hear that are recorded today are kind of what I would say an inside job. Um, you have to know the performer personally. So, you know, for me, when I get a song, if if Darius Rucker records a song that um, that I wrote. It's probably because I was able to get the song to Darius. It doesn't necessarily mean it was the best song in the world. You know, they're used, we used to have a thing where the best song would win. In today's world, a lot of it is who you know. It's not what you know. Um, and so for me personally, um, I have found that probably about 90% of the songs I've ever gotten recorded are because of a personal relationship. Either I know the artist or someone I know knows the artist. So I, that that breaks a lot of hearts out there when I tell people that because they're like, <laughs> how do I get my song recorded by so-and-so? Yeah. And I'm like, well, the chances mm-hmm. are, unless you know them or you have a family member that knows them very well, um, you're probably not going to get your song to them. That's yeah. that's kind of the world we live in today. So um, uh-huh. I, I hate to hear that. I hope it I hope it turns around a little bit to where the best song wins. Um, but uh, you know, I'm I'm a I'm not a I am a, well aware that some of the songs I've gotten recorded are not because they were the best song. <laughs> they were because they're I good. knew the first. Yeah. They're fine, but I didn't write. I didn't write. You know, it's not a. It wasn't a. It wasn't. What's a? I don't know. What's a, what's the yeah. greatest? What's your what's your greatest song? What's the song you you think is the best song in the world? The best song in the world. Yeah, I don't know. Your That's favorite today. One. Your That's favorite today. One. Oh man, um, there's one that I listen to a lot. That's constantly, and it's not like the most popular song or artist or anything, but it's called "All My Days" by Alexi okay. Murdoch. Okay, I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, and it's just like beautiful that. to me for some reason, but it's just one that I always go back to. I don't know if it's my favorite yeah. song. But I will, I will yeah. have to listen. Okay, I'll listen. I'll and, send I, it to you. And, I, yeah. and I guess the um the, the thing I would take from that is that's one that all of that kind of when I realized that um that the, it had changed to where um it wasn't just about the song you how good the song you're writing was. I said, well, I just need to be the artist. So that's mm-hmm. when I started going out and playing more. I was like, well, I, I want to. I have songs that I think people should hear, and if they're they're not necessarily finding their way into a onto the radio, mm-hmm. I said I'm just going to start playing it myself. So that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, well, I have those notes in my phone too, so I'm always like, how can I get these to someone? Like, I don't know what to do with them. They're just here. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to move to Nashville. That's the first yeah. thing. Like, the first step uh-huh. is if you want to if you want to be a songwriter, and you you kind of got to be where this where the music happens. Yeah. That that does that does um because that's how you're going to meet those people. You know, that's how you never know when the, I tell young writers if they're asking me how to get into the scene. I say, well, you need to move to Nashville and then you just need to go out and you need to meet as many people as you can. Because what's going to happen is you might um, you might not become Chris Stapleton, but your buddy might become Chris Stapleton. And then all of a sudden right. you have an outlet for the, for your music. You know, mm-hmm. and that's but you you kind of have to be must be present to win type of situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's a very collaborative process, I'm sure, too. So, yeah. Yeah. And that way you get to write with you get to write with folks. Um, and that's. A lot of the songs in Nashville, when you're writing by yourself, you'll only maybe like if I was writing songs by myself, I may only write 20 songs in a year because I'm going to be slow and I'm going to watch television and go work out all these different things. But when you're in Nashville, they uh, when you write for a publishing company like I write for Warner Chapel Publishing, the um, they will put your calendar, you know, your calendar for the whole year will be booked and every single day you're going to write. So you'll write two or 300 songs in a year because you're forced to write with other people. And that keeps the creative juices going when okay. it's just you by yourself. You can be lazy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but that goes back to also your events. I mean, being collaborative with your friends and your artists that, you know, yes. are coming to these SIP um, events. So tell 100%. us a little about like, what are you doing during your downtime? <laughs> At the events? Yeah. Oh, well, that's usually drinking. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the no. Um, we we do utilize these uh, the SIP 
I, I, I keep saying it over and over again, but the thing that makes it different is, is how collaborative the performers and the attendees get to be. It's mm -hmm. not about writing songs together, mm -hmm. but just being able to spend time together. Um, and that is actually the biggest uh, bonus that I saw from SIP from a business standpoint and a musical standpoint for me, because in our world, we usually, uh, if we're on a festival, and I, I think I've told you, this, you guys this before, but when we're, when you're on a festival, it, you might have myself and Gabe Dixon and Mark Broussard may all be on the same festival, but the chances are, is that I'm playing at two o'clock in the afternoon. Gabe's playing on another stage at four o'clock and Mark mm -hmm. Broussard's playing on another stage at nine o'clock. So we're not going to see each other and you'll see it on the lineup and you'll be like, Oh, they're going to, you guys must always yeah. see each other. And we might wave at each other from the stage. That's about it. And so, um, and that is an exhausting experience because we want to be able to see our friends. Mm -hmm. We need our, we need our balloons filled with, you know, with, with our, with the friendship, you know, and we just don't, we don't get that very often. So the SIP model for me, the most important aspect of it from a musical um, camaraderie standpoint was the idea that, Hey, we could go somewhere for five days and mm -hmm. be together the entire time, which just doesn't happen. It happened when we were kids, when we were little kids starting in Nashville, when we had no job, well, we had jobs, but we didn't have any jobs that were paying, uh, you know, music jobs. We we could see each other all the time because we'd go to a little bar or we, you know, we do all these things. And then when you get busy, that changes and you never mm -hmm. see each other anymore. And, and because of that, um, you just lose touch with kind of a, a feeling that you used to have, you know, when you were playing in the garage. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel like SIP is for a lot of us. And I feel like that's probably David Ryan Harris told me one time, um, you know, David Ryan's been the guitar player for John Mayer for 20 years. He tours all over the planet and and he's seen the top of the mountain like he's been everywhere. And and David Ryan did the first his first SIP and he called me afterwards and he goes, I will do every one of these that I can. He's like, this was so amazing because it it, it gives you that opportunity to hang out with people and talk about music and talk about the stories on the road and, and, and find your people. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a really great thing. And that's what I, that's what we do on the downtime. We mm -hmm. kind of recharge our batteries by being around each other, which is never happens in a, in a relaxed environment. We're usually yeah. about to walk on stage or just came off stage or getting on a train or a plane or a bus to go somewhere. So mm -hmm. it's really wonderful to be able to just relax and be in one place for all of us. Yeah, well, I think that's something incredibly special too, especially in such a stressful industry. Yeah, so. just <laughs> yeah, constant constant movement. You know that that's mm -hmm. um, there's a there's an old saying. Um, it was a uh, Waylon Jennings said that when he signed up to be a musician, he didn't realize that he had signed up for a fifty year bus ride, mm -hmm. and that's essentially what it feels like. We just are nonstop. You know, it's always like you know, I was just in California. Well, I had to go out there and play. Well, from Nashville to Napa. It takes 12 hours to get there, no matter how you go every yeah. each way. And and people don't see that. They don't realize that, like, when I'm driving from Napa to Sacramento to get on a plane and then all the th I'm like, this is the stuff nobody mm -hmm. sees. They only see the 45 minutes or hour I'm on stage. And they're like, that life must just be amazing. And I'm yeah. like, well, this 45 minutes is amazing. <laughs> the rest of it is a little different. So that's why SIP, I think. And I think that that's important for the musicians and for the yeah. songwriters. But I also think that's what the slowing down and relaxing and having that feeling of calmness is also for the attendees. Mm -hmm. That's what we try to, that's, that's kind of the, um, the emotional thing we try to just, we want that to just kind of, a uh, you want that fairy dust to go over the entire SIP experience, yes. you know, to where you feel like, Oh, this is great. This is awesome. <laughs> this is like, everything's just right in the world. Mm -hmm. So what's one moment from one of the past um, events that has really <laughs> stood out for you as like, Wow, this is it. Like this is why we're doing this. This is magic. Um, there's been there's there's honestly a few, there's multiple moments like that that happen at every one of the sips. And and usually it's um like a all the things kind of coming together at the right moment. And I could be in the audience watching my friends play or on stage, but when you when you're sitting there, I'll say as an audience member, when because I'm not always playing and I'm sitting there and I'm watching, you know, I'm watching. Gabe Dixon and uh, play piano along with, you know, another one of my friends who wrote some incredible song and the, and the stars are out above us mm -hmm. and it's, and it's perfect weather. And I've got a glass of wine in my hand and, and, and it's, and it's deathly quiet because everyone's listening. Everyone is in the moment and, and there's no phones going off. Yeah. There's no, like no one's responding to any emails. It's just completely in the moment. And, and that's so hard 
to uh to make happen in today's world with uh you know constant uh facebook and uh instagram and you know uh, text and all the things going on it's it's really beautiful to, when those moments happen sometimes it's when i like have to catch i'll catch myself being like all right sip is working right now yeah, this, this is, is why we're doing this <laughs> yes that's 100 yeah. percent accurate so well that's amazing and we can't wait to check out cabo so. <laughs> well i can't wait for you guys to <laughs> check out cabo cabo will be amazing and then uh and napa is in uh april and and that's a that's a whole other you know i i always say that the paradises the sip destinations mm-hmm. are um they don't need anything really to make them any more special. You know, they are, are incredible. Yeah. So um, if SIP can just add a little tiny bit to it, then it, it definitely, it, it's, yeah. it's awesome. So tell us um, just real quick, a little bit about the the hotels that you're working with, especially the one in Cabo. So I know it's like a whole package. Yeah. So we, um, the Bahia uh, hotel and beach club is, is on the second row, right in the heart of what I consider to be, where you want to be in Cabo. Um, uh, I think it, the Bahia is actually was an older hotel that they renovated, completely renovated. And I think the reason it used to be on the front row, and I think then they opened up some beachfront. So there's something <laughs> in front of it now, but it's still great because it's such an incredible little, uh, it's, I think it's an 80 room, maybe 90 room hotel. Mm-hmm. And it's got one of the best restaurants in Cabo called Bar Esquina is, is in the, is in the, uh, in the hotel. Um, the breakfast is amazing. The lunch is amazing, but the dinner is really just out of this world. I think if I, I, I believe this is correct. It was uh, it was George Clooney's 50th birthday party was held there. That's how great okay. of a little <laughs> spot this place is. It's, it's just such a cool little spot. Um, and the folks, uh, the, the, you know, the, the staff there is just uh, head and sh- we, they're the same people that for seven years, the same staff has been there, which is what you want when you go to a place. When you walk in, you know, Christian who takes your bags, you want to see uh, Arturo, you, all these folks that you just know when you walk in, you're like, oh, my gosh, hey, good to see you, which really adds to the camaraderie of, yeah. and the feeling of being at home when I get there. And and so that's the Bahia where we all stay. And then one block down from there, you just you walk, take a left and you walk down. They have a beach club called uh, Sewer, S-U-R. And that's their sister beach club. And so if you stay at the Bahia, you're able to get um, it's kind of like a it, it's owned. The Bahia is owned by some folks that are from uh, from up in Montauk. And mm-hmm. and so it feels like you're kind of at a place up in the Hamptons when you go okay. to Sewer. Uh, it has it's very uh, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, <laughs> Montauk type of like the, the beach chairs and all that. It's, it's just beautifully put together. So you walk down there. You have a uh, you have you know you stay on the beach the entire day. They have an incredible restaurant at Sewer. That's actually where uh, three of our performances, three of the four performances, happen at Sewer on the beach there mm-hmm. um, for sip. And um, but it's lovely. It's you stare out at the Arc of Cabo. You know, like it's just it wow. it's it's hard to beat. Um, and and once again, one of the things with our schedules and everyone's schedules are so busy. I think a, so a real big selling point for SIP for performers and attendees is the fact that you stay at this hotel that's right here and then you walk one block and you're on the beach and then you come back to your little your little safe zone at Bahia mm-hmm. and you're and you're right in the heart of everything. Uh, one of the best restaurants in uh, Cabo is called Edis. It's been there forever. It's basically you walk out of the Bahia and it's to the right. It's right there and it's legendary. And there's a place called The Office because you, know, you walk, I think it's about... <laughs> probably 50 steps to the beach, even if you walk out the front door of, of mm-hmm. Bahia. It's just a, it's a, it's a wonderful experience. Uh, Lee Vosberg is the, uh, is one of the owners. He's the one I'll say, but Montauk, um, he, he and his wife Meredith are, are fabulous. And anyone that comes down there, I think one great thing about SIP is because I vouch not just for the, for the songwriters, but also for the places we stay for the wineries. We, we, uh, we, that we partner with in Napa and Sonoma for, they're all my friends. So mm-hmm. when you come to SIP and you buy that pass for the week and you're there the whole time, but when you leave, you're going to be on a first name basis with Lee and Meredith Fosberg from, from, from the Bahia, you know, you're, you're going to meet David Duncan from Silver Oak in, in Napa. You're going right. to, you're going to know these people and not, and then you're going to be the same way with the songwriters. Um, and, and that's just so different than what we normally experience in this world. So that's, that's a, that's part of what I think makes uh, all of them special, but in, in, in Cabo, um, you will you will fall in love with the Bahia. It is hard. It is hard to uh, to not feel like you're something uh, a little unique when you're there. I think we already have a little bit just from the photos that we've seen. So yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. that's great. Yeah, you feel so you it's feel exciting. Like, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, and it's um and you know and Cabo is filled with incredible destinations. Don't I mean like I, there's so many 
um, beautiful hotels and, and and spots there. So you're not going to go wrong anywhere you stay there. But I I have a special place in my heart for Bahia. Um, they're just um, it's it's like I said, it just slows down. You 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 get it once you fly into you know San Jose del Cabo and you take the 30 minute drive in and you go to the Bahia. You honestly never have to leave about a block area for the whole five or six days you're there. And that uh-huh. is just and there's no car. You're in a you can get in a golf cart if you need to, but that's about the extent of it. Like you're not having to go anywhere. Yeah. So it's that's a good that's a good well, problem to have. That sounds amazing. And like this is such a cool um, collaborative extended family that you've created with these events. So we're excited to uh, come experience it and to have you in the magazine and on the podcast. So thank you so much. <laughs> I thank you. I thank you, Jordan. And thank you. This, and we're going to have what you will, you will fall in love with Cabo. It's, it's, um it's, it's hard not to fall in love with Cabo, but this is just going to help. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, uh, we can't wait. And that's going to be what are the dates on that? It's the week right after Thanksgiving. So yeah, it's a, it's November 29th uh, mm-hmm. to December second. Um, so uh, you know most folks fly in on a Wednesday, um, and then they fly out on Sunday or Monday, depending on how they want to you know they want to make it. And happen. you still have um, tickets on sale. Yeah, there's there's a there's a few rooms that aren't sold out. I think I think okay. there's a, there's a lot of them that are sold out, but there's a, I think there's maybe a handful of rooms that are still remaining. And then even if you don't, uh, one thing that we tell because a lot of folks and I'm sure some folks that you know listen to podcasts or subscribe to you guys, um, they may have second homes in Cabo. We mm-hmm. get we get some of that that happens, or they have you know time sh- shares or these things, so they they have somewhere else to right. stay. So we still do. Um, there, there are t- tickets that you can you can get that are just for the passes for the okay. uh, for the event. So so okay. folks can get that. It's all it's and um, mm-hmm. And if anybody has any questions, they can always email us right there on the site and uh, and say or you know, what, whatever they need whatever they need to know, we can help them out. Awesome. Well, we can't wait for that one and for everything you have coming up next year. So yeah, well, I, I, same here. And thanks <laughs> Thank so, much, so for, much. Thanks for talking today. Okay. All, all right. right. Good to see all you. Right. Thank Bye, you. Jim. Bye. Bye.